Okay. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Mind Over Matter with me, Gatleo. Thank you so much for being here. Um, just two quick disclaimers. If you are not watching the visual, instead you're listening to the audio, maybe you're driving, maybe you're doing your chores, maybe you're doing all these wonderful things. We love you for it. But you might just hear a little bit of thunder because it is raining beautifully outside. And if you're watching the audio, you will see that I had to pick up, um, switch on my studio lights because it's quite dark in the house and normal overhead lighting is just not going to cut it. So I had to pop out some studio lights. So that's one. You might hear thunder and all of that. But also, secondly, you might hear me clicking on my cup with my nails a little bit because I am, like I said, it's thundering outside. It's a little bit on the overcast side. It's a little bit chilly. So I got myself a cup of coffee and I love how these episodes are just for us to enjoy, to sit, to lay back, but also to inform and educate one another. So I'm really excited. Welcome to episode two of Mind Over Matter. I do have a little bit of things to say before we get started with today's episode because, um, Two things. I'm quite intentional about the content that I create. So one of the things that I'll do is I'll record the content and then post it. And then after a little bit, let a couple of days kind of set and then I'll sit and watch or listen to the content back. And the first episode was great. It was quite enjoyable to film. But for me, I do judge myself on professionalism, especially if I'm doing content where I am putting my all in it, right? It's, it's, it's professional, it's educational, it's informative and all of that. So I wasn't quite happy with the fact that I didn't have my face on. And what I mean by that is I wasn't quite happy with the fact that I hadn't done my makeup. It kind of just felt like I could have done better. I could have done better, but, um, irrespective, regardless, I enjoyed that and I am so thankful to you guys. The reception that I got in terms of the comments that I got, you know, congratulating me, well done, can't wait, need this so much. Very nervous, very, very nervous. So when I was listening to it back, I was just like, okay. Then I watched it back and I thought, okay, could do a little bit better. But like I said, the first couple of episodes is just going to be me kind of settling in to what I feel comfortable filming, um, what I feel comfortable recording, and in which space in which I feel comfortable. But thank you so, so much to the guys who are going to be, you know, listening or watching while you are doing your chores or driving to work or cooking. And um, thank you for choosing to just be intentional with yourself and intentional with your life and um, wanting the best for yourself and the best for your life. Because I suppose that is what Mind Over Matter is about. Um, you know, we get so intentional with our families. We get so intentional with our partners, our jobs, careers. We become so you know, gung-ho about making sure that this is what I want to achieve. This is how I want to achieve it. I am going to do it like this, that, and the other. And we forget to be intentional with ourselves, prioritize ourselves, want the best for ourselves um, mentally, just emotionally, you know, within the self-development. Because I feel like that is the foundation cracker, right? That is where you build what you want for yourself and how you want to achieve it. And um, to become the best version of yourself, you have to start inward, right? You have to work on the inside before you can then extend it out to your career and your um, romantic relationships and your familial relationships, anything that's relational, right? Or your schooling, that kind of thing. You kind of always have to start internally, um, I think it's one of the reasons why I want to specifically do mental health and self-development because the intention must start with you, right? The intention must start with you. So either way, so excited. It's a new episode. 
mood and I love it. The editing part was a little bit tricky because you kind of have to align the sound with the visuals and ugh, crazy stuff. But we're here now. So let me not dilly dally. If there's one thing that I'm going to do in my Mind Over Matter episode, sometimes I might share a little nugget or share something that I did over the weekend or we're just going to have like a little bit of a catch up before we get started into you know, the, 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 the events of the day. <laughs> um, but I was really, really excited to start this venture, but very, very absolutely, absolutely nervous. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited about, it hasn't quite been confirmed yet, but I cannot wait to share it with you. And you'll probably know about it in the next episode of Mind Over Matter. However, it's been a really quiet week uh, now that you are hearing this. It's been a really quiet week in terms of just my life, but it's been very busy in terms of my career, the content, uh, getting things started for the year. And with how busy I was and my interactions with the people that are close to me, one of the big things that kind of stood out in my mind is I really want the next episode to be an episode where we speak about the things that we're letting go of in 2023. What are the things that I would like you to take with you into 2024? And the reason why I wanted to do this, hang on, give me a minute. Let me just, let me just have a drink quickly. But the reason why I wanted to do this is because the first quarter of the year. A lot of us are resetting, we're acclimating ourselves to the current situation we're in, whether economically, financially, emotionally, we're kind of acclimating, we're doing a, a strategic session kind of thing where we are pulling out what do we want to work on, what our goals are, this, that, and the other. And I have thought that it would be so helpful to have a episode, an episode where we talk about what things we want to let go of, we want to leave them in 2023 and not carry them with us into 2024. And of course, as always, I write everything down on my phone or I write it down on my iPad or I write it down on my laptop, but pretty much everything is connected. So if I see it in, in if I write it on the notes on the laptop, I'll see it on my phone in, in almost instantly, right? But I wanted us to talk about how it is so important for us not to forget, you know, moving with intention for ourselves and how we relate to others. Because if there's one thing that's really, really important and that I try to encourage is a positive growth mindset. It's really important to start the year off with a positive growth mindset. And why positive? Because as much as the situation may be hard for you currently, maybe mentally, maybe financially, um, whatever it may be, right? A relationship, uh, familial situation that's not working out for you, that kind of thing. As much as you may have started out your year like that, you need to try and engage in a positive mindset because a positive mindset kind of sets the tone for your year. It sets the tone for how you want to move. So for instance, if you start your year off really negatively, right? You're just like, I don't even have money. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't like my friends. My friends are being mean to me, this, that, and the other. If you start out like that already with that kind of mindset, it becomes really difficult to pull yourself out of it because everything that you do, you're still going to do it in the back of your head. They thinking, oh my gosh, I still need to do this. I still need to have money to do this. I still need to, all these kinds of things, right? And that's why I try to encourage that, create the positive mindset inside yourself. Have it be the way you start each and every single year. There must be optimism. There must be positivity. There must be seeing light at the end of the tunnel. You do not know what's going to be in at that end of that tunnel right? You don't know what's going to be there. But the reality is you believe that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. You might not see it now. It's like those long tunnels where trains just whiz through, right? 
when you enter the tunnel, you're not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You're really not. So what you can do is believe that the light is going to be at the end of the tunnel. Create the positive mindset. There's so many ways in which you can do that. And I go into detail about how you can do create positive mindsets and all of that on my Instagram pages, uh, life by design underscore Katleo or my TikTok pages where I talk a lot more as well, but I do it in short video formats. Again, it's also called life by design Katleo. And there I actually talk about how you can do it. And that's not the purpose of today's <laughs> episode, but I will say to create a positive mindset, some of the things that you can do is to be very intentional about your goal setting, is to be very intentional about practicing gratitude every day. Mindfulness must be a part of your day. One of the things that I have, um, I've got a lot of notebooks, right? I've got notebooks for my work, um, all my different types of work, right? I've got notebooks for YouTube, for, for content creation. I've got a notebook for my nine to five. I've got notebooks for my life coaching stuff. But I also have a spiritual notebook where I write down my favorite Bible verses, where I do this. And all of these notebooks, I carry some of them with me at all times. So if I'm at work, it's the work ones. If I'm content creating, I'm in the house, it's, it's somewhere near me, right? And that helps a lot because it makes you mindful. You write everything down. Do you know the importance of writing things down? Manifesting, which is a very trendy term, right? It has been in the last couple of years. Manifesting is so important because you're speaking something into existence, but you're actually owning what you feel, how you're going to do something, how you're going to approach it. You're manifesting it by writing it down. So every single time you're going to go back and look at it and say, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is what I said I was going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Even if it just means a video idea. Even if it means just studying an extra hour or two each day. Even if it means being more intentional about where you are, practicing your gratitude, practicing mindfulness, all of that. It is so important and it becomes so helpful for um, creating that positive mindset. Positive mindset goes very hand in hand with growth mindset because growth mindset essentially means, I did tell you guys that I'm going to use terms that I use when I work, but um, growth mindset essentially means that I am seeing the challenge in front of me. I see it. I see it. But I'm not giving up on it. I'm not giving up on myself in this, I am not giving up on this whole thing like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Growth mindset says, I see the challenge. I'm rising up to it. Let me figure out how I'm going to do it. And you figure it out day by day by day. You kind of chip away at it, right? You know, when you're chipping away at stone, you might not see the purpose of what you're doing after five, 10, maybe even a hundred chips. You got right? You chipping, chipping, chipping away and you're not seeing it. But if you do that for two hours each day or five hours each day for a month or even two weeks, you will see the results of your efforts, right? So the growth mindset also says that. The growth mindset says, look at it. Yes, we're not going to hide the fact that it's definitely a challenge, but look at it and say to yourself, I'm going to work on this. I'm rising up to it, right? Roll up your sleeves and get to work. And I feel like it's so important to have that kind of mentality, especially at the beginning of the year. I know it's really difficult for 90% of the world. It's a really tough time, especially when you're reading the current financial economic situation. So many of us are going through it. I can tell you at least I've got at least five big problems in my life currently, but meeting me or being outside and meeting me for lunch or being with friends or whatever, you would never say. You would never say, even with just seeing me online, constantly creating content, you would never actually even say that. This lady is going through all her days? How, Miss Ma'am? 
but I actually am. But because I choose to say, it's just for the time being, it's just for the time being, let's keep going, right? It rains, it rains, it rains like it is right now, but ultimately the end is going to be so much more sweeter because the sun is going to come out, right? There's always a silver lining, you know, um, um, there's always a silver lining at the end of the day. Sorry, I was looking at my phone. So if you hear me say, um, um, I was looking at my phone because I got a, a Google alert. So outside of that, it's really important to create that growth mindset, that positive growth mindset. And it's one of the things that I talk to my clients about a lot, much more importantly at the beginning of their journey with me, but also at the beginning of the year. So, so important. But I do want us to sort of get into the video of today and some of the things that I would like you to be cognizant of, to be mindful of, to leave them behind in 2023. If this is what you allowed, let 2024 be the year of intention where you say, I am aware that this is not what I like. I don't like doing this. I don't like being spoken to in this manner. I don't like this, that, and the other. And I'm going to change that. That's not going to happen in 2024. Not going to happen. Let me adjust myself. Um, so that's what I was saying in the sense that you have to be aware. You have to let some things go. You have to not let your uh, 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 heart take over certain things, you, like giving up, choosing to give up. No, you, your mind needs to work here. Your logic needs to work here. You need to enforce these boundaries. You need to do this, that, and the other. And these are some of the things that I want you to take away with you in 2020, take with you into 2024 and leave the, 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 the negative of it all behind in 2023. Okay. So the first one that I wanted to share with you is to let go of the opinions of others. Now, I understand that in our situation where we are at right now, no man is an island. We live around people. We're constantly in a society where social media is a huge thing. And at some point, you're going to feel bombarded and pressured by the opinions of others. You're going to feel like, okay, maybe I need to look into this. Maybe I need to look at this and see what people are actually saying. Okay, this, that, and the other. But a lot of the time, listening and taking in the opinions of others often diminishes your voice. So it's almost like you listen to someone, oops, you listen to someone say to you, well, I don't like how you do this. I think you should do it like this. That's fine. That's at work, right? Then you go home and then you hear your mom say, well, you know, if you had done something like this better or you had done it in this way, maybe you'd be winning. Maybe it would be better. Maybe you'd be a better person. And then you go and you sit with your girlfriends and your girlfriends are like, friend, you know, he isn't a great guy. And you know that you're not supposed to be there. And you know that this, that, and the other. If you allow negative opinions of others or negative statements of others to constantly surround you, it diminishes the fire of your own voice. Do you understand what I'm saying? It diminishes the fire of your own voice. Therefore, it becomes so much harder to let your voice shine through then you start not believing in yourself. You don't believe that you can accomplish this. You don't believe that you could be the next Richard Branson or Oprah. Well, you know what I'm saying. You don't believe that you could be the next super mogul because you allow the opinions of others to drown your vision for yourself, your growth for yourself, right? Um, so because of that, you end up sitting there thinking, well, even if I did try, so what? I'm probably not going to get as far as I want to. No matter how slow your growth is, no matter how slow your process is, some people's processes take two months. Some take six months. Some take 10 years. I know that feeling. Trust. <laughs> Trust you me, I absolutely know that feeling. But letting go of the opinions of others means letting your light shine through. 
So the next time somebody says something negative to you or tries to share something that you should do, but then it's completely contradictory to who you are, where you then feel like they're making you feel small. Remember, it's just the opinion of that person. That's not you. That's not your life. So why should you let that person diminish your value? Think about that. Think about that. Giving up on your goals. If there's one thing we're not going to do in 2024 is to give up on our goals. We can't. I need you to look at your goals, whatever they may be, right? Mentally, professionally, you know, you want to become a better person. You want to have emotional strength. You want to gain emotional intelligence. You want to get promoted at work. You want to finish off your school year or your academic year cum laude or mag magna cum laude. Whatever it may be, I'm going to need you not to give up on your goals. I'm going to need you not to give up on yourself. I'm going to need you to remember who TF you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to need you to remember who you are. If you can go out of your way not to give up on someone else, you don't give up on your friends. You don't give up on your family members. You don't give up on your blah, 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 all those people, you don't give up on them. So why are you giving up on yourself? Why do you feel like your goals are not necessary to push through with? You owe it to yourself to see what you can be and what you can achieve if you push. You literally owe it to yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? You owe it to yourself. There's nothing more to it. If you are sitting here and you're thinking, this is what I want to achieve, this is what I want to do for myself, this is where I want to be, then you owe it to yourself not to give up on your goals, not to give up on your healing, not to give up on your growth, not to give up on whatever it is that sets your heart on fire. You need to understand what separates people who live life, right, from people who are really enjoying their lives is that they don't give up on themselves. They don't give up on the goals and the things that they set out for themselves. They just don't, no matter how hard it is. And please do not underestimate the fact that I am aware of how difficult this is sometimes when situations don't align, when circumstances don't align, when economics don't align, when finances don't align. I totally understand that. But I'm speaking from a high-level point of view Giving up is not an option. No, ma'am. Giving up is not an option, okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, another really, really big, important part of 2024 that I want you to take with you, it's important to learn how to say no. Now, I know it's really difficult for many of us, and especially if you're a people pleaser or a recovering people pleaser like myself, <laughs> I'm definitely a recovering people pleaser. Do I still people please? Oh, I guess I do with certain people in my life. Yes, but I'm recovering. I'm doing a little bit better. There is an importance to knowing how to say no. I was actually watching a TikTok the other day. And this person was talking about being unkind and being mean sometimes and saying that if you don't be mean, if you catch yourself in a situation where you have to be mean to be kind, sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind, you know that saying? So if you catch yourself in a situation where you have to say no to someone, if it comes at you practicing kindness, to yourself, then that's exactly what you need to do. You can't keep saying that I'm a kind person. I can't say no. I let people disrespect me. I let what, 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 what. I just allow it. I can't help it. If you think about it, that is actually being mean to yourself. So as much as you can say that, oh, no, no, but I'm kind. I can't, I can't, I can't. So is it okay? Is it okay to be mean to yourself? all in the hopes of, all in the efforts of being kind to others. So you're not really kind then, are you, darling? You're not really kind because then you're being horrible to yourself. 
So setting the boundaries, one of which is saying no, whether in work instances, whether in uh, family instances, just saying no. If there's something that I, I can tell you, I did it over the weekend. My friends wanted to come see me. And like I said, I'm going through five million and one. Okay, struggle things, okay? And my friends know about the, the some of them, some of them, not all of them, right? But my friends know about them, and they wanted to come see me. And of course, that's what you want to do, right? Uh, you want to come see your friend if your friend is really going through something. And uh, luckily, they'd informed me because they, they, they thought that they were just going to whiz in and come and see me without letting me know. Luckily, one of my friends said, listen, are you home? We're thinking of coming to see you, what have you, what have you. I actually said no. Why? Because I wasn't in a space to see them. I wasn't in the space where I now need to be present. I was actually mid-self-isolation at that point, And I just wasn't in my emotional strength to actually deal with, se with seeing them. The old people pleaser me would have said, oh, um... Yeah, okay, yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. When I know that it's not okay. So saying no in work situations. If your colleagues are breaking your boundaries, no is a word that you're going to need to get accustomed to. You're going to need to know how to say no and when and how and gabani gabani. You're going to need to know how to say no. It's important. For your mental health, it's important for your mental strength, it's important for your emotional regulation as well. These are really important things. You need to set the tone. And if you can set your positive growth mindset tone for the year, let no be one of the things that you exercise a lot. You don't have to say no every day. You don't have to say no every 12 minutes. It's hard. I definitely understand that. But no and saying no, it's an answer. It's a full-on answer. But it also means you take back your power. You teach people how to address you. You teach people how to come to you, come correct. You teach people that, you know what, with this, yeah, cat, cat that's not going to fly with cat. Mm -mm. No, that's not going to fly with him. No, 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 ma'am. So you have to know how to exercise no, and it actually just takes you starting. Just one time where you know that, oh my gosh, I don't think I can say no to this person. Just say it. If it's something that you want to do or to say, that you're really not part of this, you're really not into this, please say no. It is so important to learn to say no. It is self-preservation. It truly is. They always say selfish people live longer or live the longest. It's actually true. Because in the midst, <laughs> right? In the midst of them seeing everything that was happening or whatever, but they chose to self-preserve by being selfish. There's certain moments where you just need to be selfish with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, can we please also... <sighs> This is really, really important, okay? But can we please also let go of the feelings of guilt? Like I could have tried harder on that project. I could have tried harder with that friendship. I could have tried harder with my relationship. I could have tried harder every single time. I should have said something before they walked out of my life. I should have said something before they walked out of my life. I should have said something before I lost them forever. I should have said something before they got onto that plane. I should have, I should have, I should have. All those feelings of guilt. No. No. One thing that you can tell yourself is, I did the best I could in the time, in the moment. I reacted in only a way that I would know how. May it have been wrong? Sure, maybe. It could have been. But in that time, that's what I knew, and I am not going to beat myself up over it for the next six months. I did my best. I wanted to save the relationship. I wanted to save the friendship. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted. Fine, 
you can say that, but do not carry the feeling of guilt with you. I should have done better. I should have done better. I could have done this better. No. Can we not carry that into 2024 with us, please? Okay. Lastly, before we wrap it up, can we please let go of people who invalidate our feelings? I know that's a little bit of a hard one. I know that's a hard one. But a lot of us find ourselves in positions where we are around people who invalidate our feelings. They invalidate our hurt. They invalidate how this situation made us feel. It's almost like it doesn't matter. You're doing a huge injustice to yourself if you do not step into your light and actually say, no, no, what you're not going to do is tell me how you didn't mean to hurt me. You did hurt me. And this is what you need to hear. You did hurt me and that's it. You're not going to come here and tell me that, yeah, but that wasn't my intention. I didn't mean to hurt you. Why are you dictating to me how I should feel about what you said to, to me? You're invalidating my feelings. In 2024, can we just not allow that? Can we not allow people to invalidate our feelings? Can we stand on the business that we are going to call out people who invalidate our feelings? Nothing wrong with that, right? You deserve a lot more than people who are consistently going to be invalidating your feelings and making you feel some type of way. You deserve a lot more than that. You really do. So I'm here to say that whatever you feel is valid, you are worthy, you're an exceptional human being. And at this point, you have to believe it. You have to believe. You have to believe that you're going to make the money. You have to believe that you are going to be okay mentally. You have to believe that you are meant for greatness. You have to believe all of it. You have to sit in it. You have to breathe it, go through it each and every single day. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You have to believe it. Change your mindset about it. Positive growth mindset. It's so important. But these are the things that I want you to walk into every single interaction, encounter, engagement, whether professional, whether relational, whether social, whether whatever it may be, whatever it may be. Walk into every single encounter remembering these things. Your boundaries matter. Do not let people disrespect you. Do not let people invalidate you. Not this year. You are not going to feel guilty. You are going to say no more. So important. I want you to think about that. Listen to this podcast or watch it over and over if it's going to help. I want you to think about it and I want you to take it extremely seriously. Take what you need to do and you need to take to be more stronger for yourself this year. It's so important. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this version of Whew. I hope you guys enjoyed this version of Mind Over Matter. I'm so glad you were here. I'm glad that you stuck around and you listened to me while you were doing your thing. I hope you're cooking for me. I hope you're making me a cocktail. I hope you're doing all the wonderful, nice things. Please, please, please. Thank you so much. You can find me on social media. I am pretty much everywhere. Gatlo Malela on YouTube and Gatlo Malela on Instagram, Twitter, or oh, X, X, my bad, my bad, X, listen, TikTok, and then if you want to just follow this aspect of me, the coaching side, the mental health side, the educational informative side, then all you need to do is just look for Life by Design Gatleo or Life by Design underscore Gatleo on all the platforms. I am there as well. So, yeah. So excited. I had a great, this was a great session. I feel good about some of the things that I shared with you today. And I hope that you can take these little nuggets of wisdom and walk into your next week with them. 
listen to the podcast as much as you can, share it with your friends. I really would love and appreciate that, especially your friends that you know love podcasts and love to work on themselves, their mental health. Please share it with them, their development. Please share it with them. But I'm going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.